Do you not have a memory? Oh, man. I still have my memory palace. Uh, I have not put in the effort to lay the foundation. I, it's friggin' weird. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And we are a bunch of pedants. Oh, God, yes. We're so pedantic. Um, not pedestrian. Not pedestrians, thankfully, but... No. Pedestrian. Well, you're pedestrian in a physical sense, and I'm usually pedestrian in, like, I'm a very boring, like, predictable follow the same route. Yep. I tend to think of Moby Dick as a story about a whale and not a metaphor. <sighs> okay, no, that's not, so good. That's not true. I haven't read Moby Dick. So. No, I, I have. It's really good. I read it while sleeping on the street in London mm-hmm. um, and getting my GED. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. But uh, no, today's podcast is about pedantry, mm-hmm. which is over explaining and explaining when, is, when explaining is unnecessary. Or essentially being an insufferable jerk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we had planned an icebreaker, which was, think of a time when each of us has been pedantic, Mm -hmm. and neither of us could think of one. Not because we are not. Because we we totally effing are. We are. I have been called on it. I have been called on it years after the fact, and Mm -hmm. been like, yup, Mm -hmm. yup. Uh, I am a shameful pedant because when I am called on it, I attempt not to double down yeah. anymore. Yeah. I definitely spent a long time doubling down. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think like part of being a pedant is, is, and, and being pedantic is lacking the self-awareness to know that you're being pedantic. Yeah. Every, when, you, when you think about it, you're like, oh, I can't really think of a time. Everyone you know can think of a time. Yeah. The, only, the closest we can come, I'll quickly tell this. Uh, because I caught myself midway, so I suppose it doesn't count, but Jim was explaining a science fiction storyline where lots and lots and lots and lots of planets were being destroyed by an enemy force, and he kept making a reference to, like, you killed billions of people, and because there was lots and lots and lots and lots of planets, I'm like... Wow, it's got to be more than a billion, like a trillion. Actually, it's probably yeah. more like a trillion. Uh, or- be- but before I started that sentence, I'm like, well... I'm like, well no, like, yeah, I'm gonna be pedantic when I say this, but like, it's, it's probably more like it's like a Doctor Who, like, billions and billions. But <laughs> um, so I mean, that's that's an example only because it just happened when we were doing the pre-show tonight, tonight while we're doing a show on, on on pedantry. But it's not really a meaningful example. To be fair, I mean, the the example where I explained to you what pedantry was yeah. repeatedly is also an example of that. Yeah. So, um, so what is pedantry? Um, I mean, we have, there's lots of examples of it. I mean, like, um, colloquially, we refer to, like, grammar Nazis that way. Somebody who's really picky about correcting grammar. I'm really suspicious of anybody who self-identifies as any kind of Nazi. Yeah. No. Even in jest. Yeah. Uh, but there's also, there's also people who are pedantic about uh, correcting facts or habits. Yeah. Or anything like that. Yeah, like, you, you have... You know, actually, you have some bad habits, and I really, I really feel, I feel like they could be better, and I feel like I could tell you how. Yeah, Ryan, your grocery shopping habits. Yeah, I just, I don't want to be, I don't want to be mean when I say this, mm-hmm. but I think that you could improve your. I've, I've, I have a PowerPoint. Yeah. About how you can improve those habits. Yeah, it's see, it's cool, Jim. I understand. I pick up as you're dropping down, but see, like the the real thing you need to do is you need to have a list, and you need to mentally visit your grocery store. <laughs> you must walk before, its aisles before, uh, because that's the only way that you're ever going to be able to do it. And like, let's just be really, you, yeah. you the the goal is to save money. The goal is to not spend stuff yeah. on on frivolous stuff. So I mean, really, I mean, that's the way you do it. It's pedantry. We we. We talked about it in the pre-show as as the person who takes on the role of being your teacher when you never enrolled in the class. Yeah. Like they have decided that you are about to learn something and they are going to tell you what it is. It is the the conversational refuge of narcissists. Yeah, it offering advice when it was never even asked, um, never solicited. It's basically like officious meddling. 
You know, you're yeah. just, you're just yeah. I, I remember that. That was a term that I came, that, not I came up with, that I came across in my thesis writing about like uh, bystanders versus uh, a person who just goes around correcting and helping and like, oh, you shouldn't do that because it's dangerous. You yeah. Know, that kind of stuff. So seemed appropriate when we were doing mm-hmm. the pre show notes. There's, there's meddling is certainly a. Uh, a thing that's involved, and everybody knows that. That I would, I would go actually further. I would go further than everyone knows somebody who's pedantic. I would say that everyone is pedantic at times. Yeah. Um, and the question is, uh, I think the the thing that makes you a pedant is what do you do when confronted with that? Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, my my reaction as someone who does not wish to be a pedant, uh, but is sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes often is to feel immediately ashamed or attempt to catch myself before I get in there and I'll have this like any time I have a sentence that would start with will actually I begin to throw it out before I can say it mm-hmm. uh, because it probably is better off in the garbage mm. but um, a, 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 a real pedant will either explain to you why what they're explaining is actually relevant or explain to you why pedantry is not actually bad. No. And it is bad. Yeah. And I mean, like, the the big thing when it comes to... there, There's a time and a place where focusing on the details or, like, really honing them can be a good thing. Like, yeah. we were discussing that in the pre-show. If you're it all, planning a party? If you're planning a party, um, as we were saying, like, really deep philosophical conversation, like, trying to define terms um, or anything like that. Like, there's... It all depends on what the point of the conversation is. Because if you are... If the, the purpose of it is, like, discovery, clarification, where two people are willingly engaging... Or two or more people, I should say, are willingly engaging in, in that style thing... Like, it seems appropriate there that you would want to, like, hone in on those details and really, really knock it out. As opposed to, like, I'm telling you about me going to the grocery store and you just butt in, you know, and correct me on all sorts of stuff that yeah, I'm with, saying. With, with with my varying grocery store strategies. Yeah. Now, the, the I think the thing that, that, dif- that makes pedantry different from, from detail-oriented conversation mm-hmm. is pedantry is invariably... I- irrelevant details. Yeah, it is. It is details that, um, and it it isn't a thing that adds to discussion so much as derails it. I mean, yeah. pedantry derail. I, I, not all pedantry is derailing, but all derailing. Well, no, there's lots of derailing that isn't pedantry either. Mm-hmm. Ad hominem attacks, personal attacks, are a yeah. form of derailing, but they're not pedantic. Yeah, they're just straightforwardly shitheaded. Yeah, Pede- being a pede- uh, pedant. I don't know why I'm having... I think it's starting to get late. Um, usually focuses on details that kind of misses the point of the greater conversation. Yeah. And, like, and I mean, I'm just restating what derailing is, but uh, it, in, in an effect, pauses, like, the, the what you're trying to, in good faith, trying to discuss or whatever the point of it is, and it draws attention to something that... Uh, my favorite example that you give is, is somebody who, who's really pedantic about uh, grammar. Because most of the time, as you stated it, when you're being pedantic about grammar, you already understood the content of what the person was trying to say. And so focusing on the the presentation of it, when the communication or when the idea has been transmitted from one person to the next, Mm -hmm. just seems like an unnecessary thing to focus on. You have to deliberately ignore what that person is saying. Yeah. um, And focus on on the context. But I mean, it also, like, like, it happens in the, the, the... uh, the cry of of misandry, mm-hmm. or or what about men's rights, mm-hmm. is is a thing that you know, or or even in in cases of of you know legitimate men's issues, mm-hmm. um, it comes up in contexts of um, feminism and women's issues. And it's mm-hmm. like okay, there is a place to talk about you know issues of of suicide and, and things like you know, among men. That place is not right now, mm-hmm. in this space. Mm-hmm. Like that, the thing, the thing with pedantry is it is it pull it tries to pull that conversation and make it about what you want it to be about, mm-hmm. um, and that is part of I think the the essential bit of pedant, uh, of, of pedants. It is it is 
the the retreat of narcissists. But grammar is probably the the most straightforward example, and it is bad. Yeah, or I was just going to quickly add before we uh, continue on, or um, the other function, other than to draw attention to something you want to talk about, is ultimately to discredit or... Or put the other person down. Yeah, like that's well. I, well, actually, means I am about to tell you the yeah. truth. This other person is wrong. Yeah, and let me tell you why you're stupid, kind of deal. So yeah. I just wanted to, to throw that in there before mm-hmm. we, we continue along this this path. Yeah, I mean, but the example of grammar uh, is probably the easiest one to understand. The easiest one and is the thing that you see everywhere on the internet. Yeah, and the interesting thing about about being a grammar Nazi is if you are being a grammar Nazi on the internet, if you are, let's 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 let's. Stop using the term Nazi to describe people. Um, if you are policing people's grammar on the internet, or in real life, for that matter, um, not only are you being a jerk, uh, you're you're being a racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's only about what five hundred million native English speakers in the world Mm -hmm. and there are vastly more than 500 million people on the internet so odds are really good that the person you're policing doesn't speak English as a first language and you're using that as a reason to exclude them from a conversation which is a super shitty thing to do it's xenophobic it's colonial because it's based on the sort of ex- the expectation that everyone should speak English, not just speak English, but speak English in the way that you would like them to speak English. <laughs> I hang out with a bunch of writers on the internet, and so I know a lot of people who are avowed uh, grammar pedants, and it annoys me to no end um, because I wrote a blog post, I don't know, maybe six months ago, about how I don't give a fuck about people's grammar anymore. I just have more important things to worry about Mm -hmm. like what are they saying and is it ambiguous and how do i understand them and are they being an asshole which if you read most internet comments the answer is um they're saying something reasonably unimportant uh maybe i understand them and yes so i mean that's that's one example it also derails important discussions Mm -hmm. Everybody has. Everybody who has been to university and taken a humanities course has had that guy in the second row who raises their hand for everything and derails a whole class. If you haven't, you're it. I know, because that man was me. <laughs> I imagine that man was also you. Um, yeah, there was a few times. I, it wasn't a regular occurrence. Uh, there was a few times I remember asking questions that, in retrospect, um, was unnecessary to ask, especially in front of the entire class. I I remember I was I, I, I happily I got schooled on it super early. I did not necessarily always learn from that lesson, um, but we were in like I was in like my third class of critical thinking and I'd just taken intro to philosophy and this was this is like my third university course ever and I thought I was so fucking smart and uh, we're learning about conditional statements and inductive logic and I'm like shoot my hand up in the air I'm like what about a Hume's problem of induction doesn't this doesn't this run counter to that and uh, the at the front of the class was now Dr. Um, Corey Mulville who was was just, he was the big dude who gave zero fucks. And he was like, sure, next. (laughs) Like, completely dismissed me. And I was really mad about that for about five seconds. And it took me maybe six months to realize why that question was completely irrelevant. So you pretty much Judy did. Uh, Yes, yes. Only, only weirder. And I didn't. I didn't immediately double down on it, nor did I deliberately insult anyone. Yeah, the the closest, or sorry, not the closest. Um, <clears throat> the first example I can think of of where I did something like that was in my intro philosophy class with James Van Evra when he was still around. Oh man! And I like I think it was like the end of the first 
class or maybe I put up my hand I was sitting in the back so it wasn't like the second the cool kids yeah I was sitting in the back and I I questioned um I made some reference like it, our textbook was um um classics of western philosophy 6th edition I like, by by J- uh, Con mm-hmm. Con I think is the editor mm-hmm. James Con uh anyways no, uh, Stephen. Stephen Con. Stephen Con. And why do I know that? Because <laughs> we've stared at it too many times. I just remember Con. Uh, oh. And I questioned why uh, there was no Eastern philosophy in the textbook. That's a, a reasonable question. It's a, re- it's a reasonable question, uh, but it's only reasonable uh, as a person who'd never been exposed to Western philosophy at all. The closest I had come to Western philosophy was Socrates Johnson from the Bill and Ted movie. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So, <clears throat> I, um, yeah, I was, I questioned the, the, the textbook, uh, cause it was like classics of Western philosophy. It's like, what about Eastern philosophy? Not really uh, understanding, like, anything it's, about philosophy. Listen, Ryan, you need to understand something about the classics of Western philosophy. All right. First off, um, there are no philosophers south of the Mediterranean. Correct. Ever. Ever. They sometimes visit Northern Africa, but that's only in exile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, this is very, it's, it's very, yeah. So maybe Sub Saharan Africa. Yeah. Even then, there are, there's no philosophers east of Germany. Maybe east of Austria. Maybe Czech Republic. Um, but there's definitely uh, no philosophers from Russia at all. Um, there aren't trying. any in that book. Let me tell you, I read that sucker cover to cover. Wow. Well, um, also, the... just just do, let me explain Western philosophy to you here in our podcast about pedantry. Because the other thing is, there are very few uh, women who do philosophy. Basically, almost none. Yeah. Um, you will you will find the, a brief work uh, by Simone de Beauvoir. Or but like, apart from Simone de Beauvoir, or Hilary Putnam. Hillary Putnam is a man. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> I'm glad I can control you on that one. <laughs> and, um, but 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 apart from Simone de Beauvoir, nothing interesting Bois. in in Bois. in philosophy has happened in France for the last hundred years. Mm. The last interesting French philosopher was Rene Descartes. Yeah, um, and that's all you need to know about classics of Western philosophy. No, because the last hundred years of philosophy in France is all French smoking nihilists who gave up during the war. We all know that. Oh man! But so why why is pedantry bad? To get back on the topic, pedantry is bad because it derails things, like this podcast <laughs> where I just took a, a five minutes to explain to Ryan the details of Western of Western philosophy in quotes, um, and it's abbreviated in vaguely misogynist history and teaching, but. <laughs> It is it is one of those things where it, it distracts everyone from the convenient point and forces everyone to deal with you mm. until such a time as you have been dealt with, mm. and then things can move on again. Mm-hmm. Um, and pedants are naturally hard to deal with, mm-hmm. and in, co- in in lots of conversations about. Um, particularly, uh, you, you see pedantry and derailing in, in, situ- in conversations around social justice and oppression, mm-hmm. and you're you're essentially taking people who are already struggling and who are having conversations about those struggles and being like, okay, struggle for me, mm-hmm. which is a shitty thing to do. No. Um, one of the questions we came up with was. What is the difference between pedantry and calling out or calling in? Yeah, because, I mean, there there seems like there are cases where you, and I think we, we talked a little bit about it earlier, where you would want to focus on getting a particular thing right. And a lot of the, the cases where it was good to, to be a pedant was largely around, like, whether or not you were morally right about something. Mm-hmm. So, like... Um, <clears throat> Well, I'll let you tell the story, but the powwow exam. Oh, yeah. Or the so guru the, This exam. morning, this morning, um, somebody at work uh, mentioned that we should have a powwow. And a powwow is racist. 
Um, it is an appropriate, not, not the powwow itself. No, no, but but but, but <laughs> the, the use. When, why, why people are using the term powwow yeah. is is racist. It's an appropriated <laughs> term. It's like saying, uh, you know, let's get together and have a Christmas. Yeah. Um, except even even comparing it to something like Christmas misses out on a lot of cultural nuance. Mm-hmm. But I mean, pa- and, and 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 we had a brief conversation about why powwow is racist. <laughs> Uh, before moving onward, but the, I mean, because and sadly the guru thing, which also happened today, someone referred to me as a guru, which is mm-hmm. also racist, mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't call them out on it, and I should have. Um, but they they are in a position of more authority than me, and I I was I hesitated when I should not have. But there, you know, it's 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 that notion of when you explain something like that when you, when you explain that something is racist or misogynist or pro- when you call someone out for that kind of behavior and you explain it is it pedantic and i think sort of on upon further reflection the answer is uh it certainly could be mm-hmm. but on the face of things it is not mm-hmm. and the reason is is that one of the one of the things we talked about with pedantry is it doesn't add anything to this the discussion mm-hmm. and if we want to say that calling out even even like racist language even even casually racist language i mean i mean we're not using slurs we're just appropriating terms which is somehow milder mm-hmm. that is not a road i particularly want to go down after having said it out loud but if, if we want to, to refer to acts of calling that out as pedantry, we have to own that those things are pointless details. That the act of, of calling out and explaining that stuff is, is even if it derail, like, like even if it moves discussion, it, the, the act of it is, is sort of, it, it adds nothing and is pointless. And in doing so, I think it delegitimizes a lot of those struggles. Yeah, in a way that and really upon reflection bugs me. Well, and I think we'd have to we'd have to make one um dis- or we have to at least voice one distinction that when you are a typical not you, but when a person is doing a typical pedantic kind of pointing out the things, it's immaterial to the conversation at hand. There is on a surface level um an irrelevance to pointing out that powwow is the wrong use of the word because you still understood what the person was saying. My problem is not that I did not understand them. And that's where I'm, I'm saying yeah. that we need to clarify this this point that mm-hmm. one is not like the other. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and so, okay, anyways, continue on. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, that, that, that the problem is not that they're using powwow wrong. The problem is that they're using powwow at all. Yeah. Um... Which is a term that is appropriated. Yeah, it, 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 it's almost like it, it spurs on a relevant side conversation that just closes the loop. But yeah. again, it's relevant to the conversation because it was inspired by the conversation. But it's not. It's not something that. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, I, and I, I think yeah, the yeah. the issue with the, and this is a thing that comes up in, in discussions of language and especially in discussions of language and social mm-hmm. justice. Um, because language is one of those things that people play fast and loose with mm. is you know or or you see the same thing in not not just in inappropriated terms but in defining things as normal mm-hmm. um you know normal women what is that what does that mean mm. and more often than not that is a phrase that excludes trans women mm-hmm. so it, like it comes, it, it comes up in in, in use of language, and, and the the question that is asked is, is is sort of what is the point, and and is it is it language policing, and the answer is yeah, but it is language policing with a point. It is with the point of um, requiring people to grapple with privilege and grapple with um, their their complicity in oppression, mm-hmm. and to say that that is not worthwhile is to undermine that struggle. Mm-hmm. There's probably a whole separate video on this that someone else has already done. 
about pedantry and and social justice. Which, by the way, I mean, I don't know of any of these videos, and I'm certainly not qualified to be able to pontificate on it. But if you know that, vi- if that video does exist, link it to us, and we will definitely yeah, put it in the show Yeah, because I would notes. love to see it. Um, and I will probably look to it, look for it and try and put it in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if not, I might make it myself. Yeah, like, I don't feel comfortable in having that conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not qualified <laughs> to talk about it. This is what makes me a social justice warrior, Ryan, and you just a social justice corporal. I thought you were going to say social, ju- social justice asshole, but... No. Uh, well, we'll we'll talk about that in our in our inevitable social justice warrior podcast. Yeah, that, that is coming. But it is it is it is one of those things that yeah I think that pedantry when re- when it relates to calling people out or calling people in and and be, it, it is a form of behavior correction. Mm-hmm. But unlike your grocery shopping habits, mm-hmm. your grocery shopping habits are irrelevant to me. Mm-hmm. Um, your participation in systemic racism is not irrelevant to me. Mm-hmm. You are a person I care about, mm-hmm. and I don't want you to participate in systems of oppression, mm-hmm. even if they benefit you and make you feel cool. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, if they do, I double don't want you to participate in them. We will find other ways to make you feel cool, my friend. <laughs> we will m- imagine mammoth grocery stores that you can journey through in your thoughts. Maybe that's where my mind palace is going to be. Your grocery store? Yeah, it's worse ideas. Yeah. Um, so, how not to be a pedant? Yeah, this is not a thing that we're super good at giving advice on because on a on a kind of us explaining to you how not to be a pedant is probably pedantic in and of itself. Yeah. Um, I think the big question in how not to be a pedant is just to. I mean, you'd have to almost train yourself to do it, but before jumping in and correcting other people, just asking yourself the honest question of to what aim is is what I'm about to say mm-hmm. going towards, and does it contribute meaningfully to the conversation? Am I adding to the conversation, or am I diverting the conversation? Um, and I mean, I guess if you're unsure about it, just ask it in a nice way that doesn't insult another person. Ask it, asking is, 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 is rather than interjecting seems like a really good. Yeah. Uh, thing to do. Um, my uh, usual so so about four years ago in November, no October. Um, I remember because I was on my way with a friend to volunteer at a thing, and she called me out on interrupting her. I thought about it, and I had like in the past five minutes, I had interrupted her like three times, um, and it was not a th- like it was just sort of a thing. About my behavior, I, I get really uh, excited about stuff. I talk and I, and I start talking, and, and and everything gets scattered, and I interrupt people. And it wasn't a thing I was really aware of. But it was definitely a thing I was doing, and it was obviously a thing that was that was uh, bothering them. And it made sense. Mm-hmm. And and I, so I started to become really conscious of it. And one of the things I've noticed with um, pedantry is 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 in that in, in that habit is. If you stop interrupting people, you will become less pedantic because you will think maybe a little bit more. Uh, but the general rule is shut the fuck up. <laughs> like as, as a general as a general sort of rule, um, because because pedantry is the retreat of narcissists. It is how do I make this conversation about what I want it to be about, mm-hmm. and. I think that the more I have begun shutting up, the better I have become at not doing that. Because I've started, I started asking the question, how am I taking up space in this conversation? And in this, in like, how am I taking up room in this dialogue and in and in this and in this space? Because it is a thing that is worth being conscious of. Whether that space is a decision-making space, whether that space is, you know, a work a workspace, whether it's you know, a con- just a regular conversation, is is how am I taking up room and am I sort of conversationally manspreading? Um, which is a thing that you people totally do, and is a thing that I totally do, and I still do it. Like that's the thing is there's, I don't know that there's a cure. Um. The other thing to do is don't double down. 
I think we wrote a blog post a long time ago about doubling down and why it's horrible. But if somebody calls you out on it, um, just like like if you are if you are explaining something, and somebody calls you out on explaining, and you know, if you are taking them to school and they have not enrolled, then own it. Like just just own it immediately. And I do this partly because I'm deeply ashamed of being a pedant. But I still can't stop doing it. Hmm. And I, but I'm repentant and I'm just, and I am resolved not to double down and be like, no, 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 no. Let me explain to you why me explaining to you is, is relevant. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, the best example of that, I was, I was at a grad conference and someone used the term mansplaining in their paper. And someone in the audience asked it what mansplaining was, and they explained it. And then that person attempted to explain to them why mansplaining wasn't mansplaining. It was, it was like a golden shining moment of the mansplaining universe. Like mansplaining stars were in alignment. <laughs> uh, mansplaining, by the way, is always pedantry. Hmm. Full stop. <laughs> If you are mansplaining to somebody, you are being a pedantic shitfucker. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Yes, what are you, do you have any final thoughts on how not to be a pedantic jerk? Uh, no, I think we've covered all of it. The only thing I perhaps would throw in there was we had the fun example of when pedantry was useful. And that would be like in a filibuster situation where you're just deliberately trying to do anything to stall or derail the conversation to buy time or whatever. At the same time, like that's that's an example of pedantry being pragmatically useful. Yeah. But then it's interesting to me that that doesn't make it good. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily make it right because you're doing it deliberately to, to yeah. stall things. Um, I'm just thinking of like uh, you know like any political drama that has mm-hmm. a storyline of somebody um, uh, I can't remember the senator's name but they had one in the West Wing where they were, he was trying to run up the clock on something he was just reading like recipe books and yeah. read like uh, there's a, there's two a, cities that's and, a, it's based on a true story oh probably um, uh, Strom I mean, Thurmond yeah Senator Strom Thurmond um, infamous old white man now dead mm. um, did a crazy filibuster mm. In his youth, like he he like purposely dehydrated himself for that filibuster, and he and uh, but the legislation was now it was put in place in the American government at least that it had to be you have to always be talking about a thing that is relevant to the legislation at hand, yeah, or the speaker can pass it, yeah, and, and like they, they, not the legis- they can't just pass the legislation, but they yeah, can yeah. pass this the the the, the privilege of speaking to someone else yeah um which just has refined the art of filibustering but even then like you can we can describe situations in which um you know shooting people with assault rifles is useful yeah but that doesn't make it fine (laughs) (laughs) like we can describe situations where it is pragmatically excellent yeah but um the whether we want to be okay with that on the whole, is a different story. Yeah, I just wanted. I thought that was a fun little a side note that we had, uh, came up with that I wanted mm-hmm. to put in for posterity. But I think we've more or less covered everything that I had thought about. Certainly, everything I know about, which tells me that there's a wealth of things I don't know about it. Yeah, it's it's the thing. It's really elusive. It's not one of those things that you're aware of, and it's not one of those things I think about, I, I think about nearly enough. Is is sort of how I participate in conversational space. Mm-hmm. And it makes thinking about it and talking about it really elusive. And even sort of being aware of it mm-hmm. doesn't prevent you from doing it. I can definitely think of occasions long after my desire not to be a pedant had entered my awareness that I have explained at length something completely irrelevant to a conversation. Yeah. I just always remember, like, if you're going to destroy a bunch of planets, it's going to be more than billions and billions of people. Fuck. Sin, all right? It was for very good reasons. They were just very unclear. Billions and billions. A billion, billion stars. Listen, the the, the swarm needed those planets. Ah, okay. For reasons. 
Anyways. I'm going to go play StarCraft now. <laughs> I'm going to go and read, I think. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. I built one years ago, like when I was in the middle of undergrad. Mm-hmm. I read about them. Um, because they were an old, the memory palace is an old, uh, like sophist technique and speech yeah. speech writer technique. Yeah, because you couldn't you wouldn't write anything down. You would store it all in your in, in physical locations in your memory palace. Yeah, and so I, I spent like weeks sort of building one, and, the, mm-hmm. and I built it in the only space that I knew really well, which is the university. Yeah, and the weird thing is that years later, I can still go there and find stuff. Like, I can walk around the university in my head, in the spot of my head that I sort of parceled out from my memory palace, Mm -hmm. and still remember stuff Mm -hmm. that's in there. But I never use it anymore, Mm -hmm. which is unfortunate, because apparently it still exists.